TFAT K Live happened at the Vulcan the other day. Um, it was the first one they've done in a while, which is real shame because I've said before, as much as these guys are incredibly unfunny, incredibly lame, incredibly redacted, incredibly unlikable, um, inc don't have any redeemable qualities really, except for their work ethnic when it comes to Papa. Um, I've always said that I feel like if they did more TFAT K live shows, they would actually be a bit more, it'd be more popular and they'd get a better response, especially if they did like a combined stand-up show. But I know stand-up comedians are usually kind of greedy. They don't really like to share the wealth because stand-up shows pay so much, right? Especially for tickets and shit. You can get quite a bit of money if you do a weekend at a club somewhere. So they'd rather keep it for themselves. Understandable. They've all older dudes. They've all got families. I get it. You got to pay the bills. But with these guys' careers being in the gutter, especially Brendan, I feel like it's beneficial if they come together a bit more and start doing these TFAT K shows. Unfortunately for the fans of TFAT K, this wasn't a stand-up show or anything around. It wasn't like a variety show where they had Chin coming on, doing some of his cry singing. You had Little Brows doing his fucking stupid white frat boy rap shit. And you had somebody else doing backflips or whatever, or Chappelle coming in randomly doing backflips on stage. No, it was just them two standing on stage trying to do a live podcast, which is funny because if you know anything about the TFAT K law, you will know. Brendan has always hated live podcasts and said they don't work, they're a waste of time. So the fact that he has to do it now because he has no other option to make money, uh, not to make money, I guess, from live shows or to do a live show, he kind of is now doing it. So it's funny how things sort of change. So they recorded the live episode of them at the Vulcan, which Brendan effectively, affectionately calls the stepmothership. I'm sure the fucking owners of the Vulcan are happy that it gets referred to as stepmothership. It's super, super respectful, super nice. So let's actually watch the recording of it because I saw some clips on the Fire and the Kids subreddit and it looks like an absolute snooze fest. So let's see what the fans paid for going to see these guys perform live at the Vulcan Gas Company. Let's go. Let me tell you something about sleep, Brennan. Okay. A, a, a really? Sleep. You're going to give me an ad right at the beginning of this fucking episode. These fucking guys, bro. Fuck off, man. Honestly, the grift never ends. Right at the start, you give me a fucking ad. Now, Vulcan, make some noise if you're ready to get this show started. That was pretty good, but I think you do better than that. It's Thursday night in Austin, Texas. Vulcan, make some noise! And keep it going for your hosts of the show, Brennan Chubb and Brian Kelly. Hold on, is it me or is this filmed better than Gringo Pappy? Brendan should have hired these people to do it. Is this in-house, their team, or is this Chin filming this? The footage, the clarity, the sound looks way better than Gringo Pappy. Or am I, or am I bugging? He should actually film me special here. This is really the final kick. Why don't they have it say live? That intro isn't doesn't the intro goes. This is the fire and the kid live. No, it's not live. And do that little back and forth. Why didn't they do that for this episode? Surely that would have worked. This is the fire and the kid live coming at you live. And it's, Brendan's like, no, it's not live. That little you know clip they got, the little intro. Why not play that? Because it's actually live. But hey, what do I know? What's up? What's up, Austin? What's going on? Thank you for coming out. The oh, okay. The mic's a bit weird. Okay, Brendan, Brian's straight away gone into his fucking man thing, isn't it? We know exactly what we're going to get from Brian. Brian's gone straight into his fucking I'm a man pose. You know exactly what you're going to see now. Brendan's grabbing the microphone like it's his first time on stage. He looks really nervous, apprehensive. Do you think Brendan is scared when he gets on stage half of the time that somebody might run on stage and attack him? The fear he has about the Reddit is so weird, isn't it? He looks always so timid, always so what? Like he looks like, um, you know, those videos on YouTube or on social media of those um, stray dogs in like third world countries that people save and shit and try to rehabilitate. And they're all scared. They're used, they might be hiding under a bridge or in some corner somewhere. They're all dehydrated and starving and shit. And, you know, there's a video of some nurse kind of, you know, some vet nursing them back to full health. But they start off really, you know, scared and they don't want to get touched. That's how, that's how Brendan kind of looks when he gets on stage. It's almost like he's afraid that, I don't know, Bobby Lee might jump out of the crowd and say, it's Reddit, bitch, and just jump on his back or something. He's so bizarre, especially considering that he's a fucking professional UFC fighter. He could literally kill everybody in that room if you wanted to and take all their wives. Why are you worried? Like, why are you scared? But by the way, the Ozempic is fucking kicking, isn't it? And I, I might need to get on Ozempic. Look how fucking skinny Brendan is. Look at his legs. Look how frail he looks. 
Brendan, from this angle, his legs look skinnier than fucking Brian Callum's. Look at that. Look. Brendan's legs look frail. Maybe it's the angle, but they look skinnier than Brian Callum's legs. I need to get on a Zempic, bro. He's fucking withering away. Fucking, huh? The, and by the way, we have female fans. I had no idea. Those are the only female fans we have. It's usually... Brian's spotting some victims. Just bros. Yeah, there's a lot of dude. Brian's spotting some victims. Brian's spotting some other people's wives that he wants to fuck. He's up in here. Right. <laughs> it's just usually the bros who... And then the girls look at us with blank faces. So, or my... Brian always has to carry a drink on stage, isn't it, with the minute. He can't just have his hands free. Maybe that's the nerves, right? He has to always carry his fucking drink around. Like, come on, bro. Like, put the exactly, exactly, Theodore. Put the fucking Coke can down. We get it. You like Coca Cola? You were the blank face. You were the hungry. But by the way, you can tell he's on Ozempic because he doesn't drink anymore. You don't see him drinking whiskey. You don't see him drinking from the fucking bottle. You don't see him talking about fucking Tiger Fic. He's definitely on Ozempic because if you know anything about Ozempic, reading some of the things online, it's had a weird side effect for a lot of people where it, it kind of makes you want to um, not drink. Your addictions kind of subside when you're on Ozempic. You don't smoke as much. You don't drink as much. So he's clearly on it. He, he wants to lie and say it's fucking stress, but he's clearly on it. <gasps> anyway. I, I like the diversity in here. Too. Jesus Christ. Is this the show? What are we going to watch? This is going to be brutal. I know I keep pausing it. But most of you have probably watched it. I apologies. Jesus. Is this it? They didn't even put a sign on the back of the fucking stage. They didn't even tr they didn't even bring the red chairs with them or something. Nothing. Just this. Just this. Stools. A couple of microphones. Just a couple of guys. Straight from the airport. He doesn't even take off his jacket. He looks like he wants to leave straight away. Take off your jacket, man. Don't act like... I don't know. I don't know. It is well diverse. It how, is... how we doing in a balcony? Oh, fuck. All right. Okay. It's all right, man. First show, it's okay. Goals, goals. You get... That's embarrassing, isn't it? That's embarrassing. I guess it's good to make a joke of it, but that's kind of embarrassing. Also, don't you find it interesting? I've just started watching it. I know I'll keep pausing it. I'm sorry. But why is Brian taking the lead on this live show? And why is Brennan being so timid? It's always the opposite on the podcast. Brendan's always... Big up, Angel Ranger. Appreciate you. Bopper has more B. Boy physiognomy R and than anyone I saw in an NYC Whole Foods yesterday. Exactly. Old PP yeah. included. 100%. 100%. He does kind of carry himself that way, you know? Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's because deep down he knows he's a fraud. Deep down he knows he's a, uh, you know, deep down he knows he's everything people say he is. Deep down he knows the things that unique, the thing that I say, the thing that comedy enforcement says, the thing that fucking... You know, two ladies to try says podcast Chris say about him is actually true, and he kind of walks around, you know, a little bit like, oh, they they knew who I really am. Uh, but big up NJ Ranger. Um, but yeah, no decorations, no posters, no backdrop, no production, no nothing. Just hey, here's the stage, we're on it. Make no effort. They didn't even bring those red chairs. It's like a kind of like, hey, this is us. Remember the, the red chairs on the pod? We bring, you know, like zero. So see someday. You're only getting younger, buddy. I'm only getting younger. I'm only fucking getting younger. Dude, when's the last time we were on stage together? Uh, 1970. Yeah, it's been a long time. I'm getting younger. I pulled a muscle in my neck, drying my hair. That's a true story. Like I was, I went like, and I went, ah, oh, fuck, and I'm fucked for the next ten days. I know I am. And he's so hacking. He's doing the same thing that that hand move. Oh, imagine paying for this. Imagine paying to watch these two dopes do this shit, man. Honestly, the worst thing that happened to stand up, the worst thing that happened to stand up, yo, big up my guy Wolfgang Rittner. I hope you're good, my friend. Big up Wolfgang Rittner. The worst thing that happened to stand up was them recording their content. Recording their content and putting it on YouTube was the worst thing that happened to these stand up comedians, apart from podcasting, because we got to see how they were on stage because for a long time they'd be talking about their specials talking about no, talking about their material talking about doing sets and reps and we'd never see it we just hear them talking about it on fucking podcast but then we get to see them with our own eyes and we're all like these guys are fucking terrible you know <laughs> uh, big up Theodore all the way to Austin to sit on a set of IKEA stools made for Airbnbs. I swear to God, bro, Fyodor, I would be so pissed if I paid for this. Imagine paying for this, bro. Brother, imagine paying for this. Imagine you paid to see them do this. Just imagine, brother. Imagine you paid for this. 
How it's annoying okay. is it when your buddy, when you tell him something, he's like this? <laughs> yeah, I know. He's I'm moving, you you move your neck like RoboCop right now. I know, at least we're here at the, why do they call it the Vulcan? Great reference, by the way. Gas company, does anybody know? Good. Me neither. Nothing? That, there, this wasn't a gas company once? Yeah, cool. So somebody just said, call this one? Wow, they are actually waffling and wasting time. They didn't have anything to talk about. Have they planned a show? Have they got an itinerary what they want to talk about? God damn. Those things you just name it, huh? Just call it the Vulcan Gas Company. <laughs> right? You know, that's how you do it. Just call it the Vulcan, because it's like... What's up, um, Wolfgang? AZ, what is going on with your nose fiddling and picking all the time? Um, I've got a bit of leakage going on. i just woken up. I actually need to take my fucking allergy pills. And my nose is fucking leaking, as you can see from all the tissue paper here. So that's why I'm fiddling with my nose. It could be that, or it could be all the drugs. Who knows? It's, it might be a combination of two things. Maybe, maybe that's what's going on. Maybe it's the fucking crack. Maybe it's the fucking allergies. Maybe it's my, maybe it's the pollen. Maybe it's all the dirt on my carpet that because I haven't, you know, hoovered for a while. Um, maybe it's the cats around this house, which I don't have. Who knows? It could be a number of things, my friend. It could be a number of things. <laughs> and then gas. But, but B, you weren't here. Vulcan was, Vulcan was popping. This was the spot. This no, was I the like spot. It. I love and, this place. This and then place Rogan is... said, cool story. And then fucking right across the street, dude. Yeah, but I like this place. It's, I, it, it's got a good reputation and we're here. Oh my God, of course. They mentioned Joe Rogan in the first five minutes of this show. They mentioned Joe Rogan already. They already mentioned Joe Rogan in the first five minutes of this fucking show. <sighs> and it's about to blow the fuck up. When they find out, you know how when the Beatles, they found out they were playing on a roof? <laughs> I will say, though, Austin is alive in comparison. Like, you know, you got this. Is Brendan's not going to put that drink down, is he? <laughs> where it all came. Like, Rogan was like, I'm going to come here. And then it feels like... Somehow. Rogan's like the Beyonce for comedy. It just, yeah. or Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like where he goes, everybody goes. I know. Well, when I saw Ted Cruz tweeted, Texas welcomes Joe Rogan, I was like, okay. That's when you knew our friend made it? When Ted Cruz? Well, well, fucking... No, that's All not... the shit Rogan's done. He's like, when Teddy Cruz tweeted him, it was just, well, I just... he made it. It was just weird. Ted, now we're calling him Teddy Cruz and Joseph Rogan. Is that what we're doing? Oh, fucking hell, man. This is this is going to be hard to get through. I can't believe I woke up. I can't believe I woke up from my beauty sleep to fucking do this, but we're going to do this together. If I have to punish myself, you also have to punish. You also have to suffer. Guys, you also have to suffer. We're going to suffer together, okay? Together we suffer. But a politician, <laughs> and then, like, now Los Angeles is just, it's, anybody live there? It's just like, a, it's like sagebrush. You hear a dog barking in the distance. Like, nobody does stand-up anymore. I can't even go to Hollywood anymore. It's too depressing. Yeah. What do you mean no one does stand-up? Maybe no one wants an accused rapist and a guy that tried to bully Bobby Lee to go on some of their stages. That's probably the main reason why. I don't think no one's not doing stand-up anymore in L.A. This is so weird. I love, I love how these guys act as if stand-up died in L.A. the moment Rogan left. That's how you can tell these guys are were sucking on the teeth of fucking Rogan. They were fucking sucking on those long Rogan nipples, right? They were really fucking going full pelt on them. And they don't know what to do now they're on their own. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to be. They don't know how to act. Rogan isn't around anymore. It's so weird. It's so bizarre, man. Honestly. LA is like the purge now just all the time, though. Yeah. There's nobody around. A lot of crime. Yeah. Has David Guerra? I don't mind if they're sitting down. I would big up a uh, Victorian Japan. Victorian he carries Japan. a drink so that every time he makes a joke and gets no lace, he can take a fool's sip. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, I didn't think about that. He carries a yeah. So every time he doesn't, so every time he bombs, he can take a little comfort sip, right? Like a little comfort sip, so to distract you from the bombing and to make it. You know, not make it sting so much. Good point. Good point, Victor. In, uh, what's that? Victola in Japan. I appreciate you. We're staying there, aren't we? Well, the crime. 
No, but so that's what I was gonna say about sitting down. I don't actually meant I don't actually mind if they're sitting down. I think what would have been made a good show is if they maybe brought one of those neon signs with them. I don't see why not, right? Bring a neat one of those neon signs, plug it into the wall and have it stand stood up on there and then have those red sofas, those red chairs that they use. Or maybe just buy some red chairs in Austin while they're there, isn't it? I don't think it would have been too hard to find a couple of red seats just to kind of mimic the show layout. Like, why not? Just do that. Um, but they didn't. They just decided to just pull up and sit on stools. So the sitting on a podcast, I don't really mind it. It's whatever on a live show. But just, you know, try and mimic the fucking setup of the show. Like, you know, give your fans something to kind of, oh shit, that's a memory berry. I remember a remember berry or something. Like just sitting there on stage like this, like in their airport gear. Like I don't think they even changed from the airport, right? He looks like he wants to leave. He's still got his jacket on. Brian looks like he came straight from the airport. Like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's by the way, the two holdouts. We were like fucking this is it was just sour grapes, so like fucking I don't wanna go there. It's fucking too hot. You know? That's all we say, I know. It's fucking hot and it fucking Texas. That's 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 that was the extent of how I burned Texas. I had nothing else to say. It was fucking Texas. And I I don't even try and push Brian to move out here. I'm like, dude, someone got like shot right next door. He's like, big big deal. Big fucking deal. Happens all over. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I I I live and die in LA. It's true. But they didn't move to LA because Rogan didn't push them to move there. Rogan gave a massive offer to Joey Diaz on the podcast. Yo, big up. Victrola in Japan, appreciate you for becoming a member. Thank you for joining the community. Thank you for joining the flipping community. So I think Rogan made a big display of inviting Joey Diaz to live in Austin with him. He told everybody except these two. Do you guys remember? Before he moved to Austin, he was like stressing to everybody, hey, move to Austin. I'll buy you guys a house. The club's going to be amazing. He was really kind of promoting Austin, 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 Austin. I don't remember him saying once, to Brian Callen or Brendan, hey, you guys should move to Austin too. They just kind of tried, they tried to invite themselves there. But I think in the case of Brendan, this is my hypothesis, my guess is this. I think in the case of Brendan, I think his wife is the one to put her foot down. She probably doesn't have a lot of say in that household. She probably just, you know, why not just get to live a life where you get to spend his money? It's not too bad. But I think the one place where she did put her foot down is saying, you know what? We're not moving to Austin. Our kids go to this nice school. I think his kids go to that private school all the celebrities go to. Um, you know, she probably doesn't want to give up her LA lifestyle. To swap it for Austin is very different. So I think the wife put the foot down and then he couldn't move. That's why he's maybe a little bit depressed as well. And in Brian Cannon's case... I don't know. He's probably too old to probably move there. Maybe his wife as well also didn't want to move to Austin. Who knows? But I think um, definitely in Brendan's case, his wife told him, no way. Homeless is different here, I think. I think LA, like the homeless people, they're really homeless. They have skill, though. Well, they have no, like, the homeless are talented in LA. It's like America they got They can build talent. structures. No, but they, they gotta they gotta do shit to get money in LA because they gotta stick out. Yes, like they juggle or you know, <laughs> mind read. Yeah. They got skills. Yes, but they also have like they'll have a dog and some chickens. They have a whole like they do. It's a on the side of the road. You're like, what the fuck is going on? They're like they have cold brew coffee fucking things, and but they're also truly homeless. Like they also look like they have leprosy. You know. <laughs> Like here, I, I swear, I saw a guy gave him money. He goes, I, I give him money. He, I think he's, yeah, I don't know. He just, he looked at me and he goes, I'm between albums. Fuck, <laughs> uh, struggle is real. And he's like an REI. Yeah, 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 that's a homeless yeah, I was Austin. Like, I, I know. The homeless here, I just look at it, I go, summer is coming. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't yeah. like that. Yeah, you're homeless here. Yeah, sit back down. What? What the fuck was that? Please sit back down. That shit crazy though. It's not also, listen, I love Austin, but like also, 6th Street, dude, it's ratchet as fuck here. What are we? I, I wake up every morning and look at World Star Hip Hop. There's four videos from Austin on 6th Street every fucking Tuesday. It's, yeah. it's so ratchet out there. I do feel like it's very, uh, everybody who came from somewhere <coughs> else, there's a romance. Who's from Texas originally? Yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, you guys everybody. are real Texans. Everybody. But, but real Texans are living their lives. Zinga Nation Racing Club. Yo, big up Stinger Good. Appreciate you. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that, brother friend. Appreciate you. Big up, big up Stinger Good. Big up Stinger Good. Let's play that one more time. Sorry, I, I didn't hear that. I didn't even see it come through. Big up one more, one more, one more. Let's see, play it one more time.
Does it want to play the, the thing? Oh, it doesn't play. Anyway, big up Steen Nagu. Appreciate it, brother. My boy, like Mike Captain, when it comes down, he's fucking in a... He has a farm. He buys dogs. And he's got... Well, I think you bought dogs after you realized that everything kills all your animals. And, yeah, but he's like an original L.A. Cholo. Yeah. And then he comes here and now he's a farm and shit. <laughs> Why didn't they get Mike Caffelwood to... Oh, look, there's a guy with a golden owl jacket. Why didn't they get Mike Caffelwood to be the fucking special guest? He was on a couple episodes of the Brian the Kid anyway. He held it down when Brian Callum was accused of rape and shit. Why didn't they get Mike Caffelwood to go on stage? That would have been a way better guest than fucking Clint or Chin on there. Maybe they didn't want him to steal the limelight, but I wonder why they didn't bring him on stage. No, but at least Mike, at least Mike can fucking handle the sun, and he's kind of like a lot of the people that I feel like come to. Did Austin, he handle the sun? Yeah, because he's got he's got dark hair and dark skin. He doesn't need sunblock like me. If I'm in the if oh I'm my god, here we go with the hacky man stuff. I'm I'm a bet I'm a beta male. I'm a cuck. I'm a pussy. My name is Brian. I want to be named Pablo. I want to be a man. Like, he's going to do the same fucking routine. Is he going to do the same fucking routine? Is he going to start doing the horse thing? My legs are like horses running through the field. Is that what he's going to start fucking doing? Are we going to get the same fucking routine? Are we going to get that? Is he going to stand up and start doing man stuff? He's such a hack, isn't it? Fucking now. Hackity McHackerson. In the Austin Sun on my farm, I go... I would, Callan McHaxey. I so fucking pink, and then I have oh, to go to the well, hospital. That's the thing about Texas. Like, the, the sun and the farm life isn't for you, right? No. I want it to be. About, but I dude, want to be a gentleman think about farmer. The... Someone milk the cows, please. <laughs> that's how I would be. Dude. Me, your hands are terribly strong. Someone massage my calves. <sighs> Who's laughing at this stuff? Who's laughing at this stuff? I want to be that guy. I want to be like a gentleman farmer who has land. I want land. And if, so, and if a, there's a coyote near my chicken, someone release the hound. <laughs> and you wouldn't let him kill the cow because yes, he's too cute? I know. I know. No, he's cute. Don't kill that one. Bring me, him, bring, some, bring me something soft for my hands. Bring me the small you. Isn't that, what the, isn't, that what a, isn't that a female sheep a you? You don't fucking know. Says, yeah. You're not even a real farmer. We got Mexican salsa. ADHD team checking in from California. What's up, Pagascino? Pump it up, lol. These two are bombing so bad, lol. <laughs> Bro, it's disgustingly bad. We got Mexican salsa. It's disgustingly bad. We got Theodore. Brian, get back to your 55 <laughs> plus elder exactly. community in Florida, you donkey. Honestly, man. I think a lot of stand up, you have to be there, innit? I think a lot of stand-up, you have to be there. I think when you're not there, it's very difficult to enjoy this stuff after the fact. It's very difficult to enjoy this stuff after the fact. Let's be real. You have to be there. A couple of drinks in, a couple of fucking bumps in, maybe a smoke, maybe some cigarettes, just a bit of nicotine in you, just give you a bit of a buzz. You have to be, a, you have to be in the fucking... You have to be in there. Because, God, this is boring that's the forget it not being funny it's just boring boring are you i've never used that word before but would you actually move here b what would get you here joe rogan you know i gotta I, 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 yeah i would i, I just like don't it. think texas is for brian i no, just I, no I, I think it is for me and i love the uh i love that the comedy scene the, the energy is here i feel like but i also but like you don't want to do people... the energy isn't there. I'm gonna keep arguing against it. I've never been there. I'm not in the states. I'm in all the way in London. I don't know nothing about the states. I'm a fucking you know spectator watching it from afar. But I think this narrative that the comedy the comedy scene is moved to Austin is a joke. It's just Joe Rogan's friends. The, not everybody that's in comedy lives in fucking Austin. There's plenty of places all across the states where they're all spread across. This idea that the comedy scene is all no, it's just Joe Rogan's friends. If you want to go to Joe Rogan's club and perform, they're cool. But it's not the whole... The whole comedy community doesn't just revolve around Joe Rogan's friends. Like, let's be real. Like, please. There's the whole East Coast of people living there. There's still people in LA. Like, come on, man. But you're not a big set guy. It's not like you're doing sets all the time in LA. Even. No, so if you came not. To, it's, that's not your thing. You do the road. So don't give me that shit. So he, does, he doesn't... So they both the same. They don't do any sets. In, don't you find it strange? 
they both live in they both used to live in or Brian used to live in LA doesn't do these sets in LA just goes on the road so I guess he got blacklisted from the whole LA scene they don't talk about that do they see they don't talk about that I remember there was somebody on the TFAK Reddit back in the day um, when the whole Brian Callen allegations went down and somebody said I'm not too sure if this is true so please bear with me all right I might be talking out my ass but I'm pretty sure when Rogan went to Austin, he took with him that guy, Adam Eager, who was the booker and the manager, I think, of the comedy store in LA. He took him to Austin with him. So he basically took all the group. I think he also took some bartenders and waitresses with him too to Austin, right? They all joined him over there because he liked how they work, whatever. Somebody said that the person who replaced Adam Eager at the comedy store was either somebody that um, was super into the whole um, Me Too thing or a woman that took over the booking role and that person said okay x no more no more no more joe rogan friends so they purposely wanted to reset the club and have a whole new vibe so they basically um stopped booking Bre B brian Callan, even though he's passed there and no more crystalia that's what i remember hearing either the person is part of me too or they're a woman took over fucking um adam Eager spot which meant that he couldn't get a spot anymore that's what i heard i'm not sure if that's true but that's what i heard you're right. Yeah, so what else you got? I have a fa you want to know the truth? I have a fantasy, and it's that this is, I'm way too old to have this. I have a fantasy of carrying a fucking gun. Like, I want. We're doing that man thing again, aren't we? We're doing that I want to be a man thing. Like, oh my God. I know it's lame, but I want a fucking, I want a piece here. And I'm telling you right now that the, my fantasy versus what would really happen is I'd for the first fucking two weeks, I'd have my piece and I'd probably practice just in case there's a situation. And then two weeks later, I'd be like, it's too heavy. <laughs> and then you move back? Yes, I swear. Back? It'd be like, it was just a hot choice throwing off my hips. I can't, I can't even wear a bulky watch. You've never seen me wear anything. A fucking gun? So this is just Brian Callan doing stand-up and Brendan, what, on stage, ad-libbing. I'd just, I'd be like, oh, oh it's guns digging out for you. My, I, I, if I'm vacuuming in the car, I'd be like, ah, oh, it's digging. And then, then I'd put it somewhere and then I'd be like, I'd walk around my house with my children and I'd be like, where's my fucking gun? <laughs> <laughs> That's what would happen. Also, there, it's not Texas at all. You have a Tesla. You're getting out of your Model 3 Tesla with your oh, yeah, gun. Yeah. No, I'm not getting a truck too much. No. It's just like, oh, dust. And also, I know. Dust? Just, what but, the fuck? But also, like, everybody I know comes down here. They grow an aggressive beard. Take their jujitsu fucking way too seriously in their 40s. They work their fucking... This is... And for, at 40, you shouldn't be working this somebody shouldn't be adjusting your elbow get your elbow higher fuck you're right that's not what he should be doing people who find stuff like this funny i can never have anything in common with you i know it's subjective but i can have nothing in common with people who find stuff like this funny spending your free time going to stuff like this is one thing spending your hard-earned money to watch these two redacts, these two has-beens do this shit, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. This is so bad. And then I, everybody converts their fucking garage to a CrossFit gym so you can be, right? Am I wrong? So right? you can be functionally fit for, I don't know, if, in case the zombie apocalypse hits and you can have And what else? And there, also everyone hunts. Oh, Everyone's fuck. hunting. Thanks, Brendan, for fucking stomping all over his bit. He was going through his bit, trying to get to the fucking, what, the, you know, the punchline of doing a clean and jerk, right? So you can fucking clean and jerk a fucking home invader or something. And obviously, Brendan stomps all over it. Also, also, great. Great fucking chemistry going on there. Killing their own mate. Dude, but I got uh, 30 pounds of pheasant right now if you want some. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. I ain't doing like, it. Yeah. Yo, Brendan is bombing hard, isn't it? I don't find... I don't find your big up um super big exotic 420. I appreciate you, brother. And salute from London. Big up my NYC crew. At least Brian's trying to be funny. I don't find him funny, but at least he's trying to be funny. But Brennan is bombing hard. Brennan is bombing hard. Look at what what's this skills um skills car mate? 
Zynga would fall over laughing if he was in the front row. <laughs> Come on, no, I wouldn't. I'd be fucking um, Alex Pereira face. That would be me. <laughs> Tim Kennedy was showing us pictures of the biggest deer I've ever seen. It's not even indigenous to here. They brought in some fucking red-tailed prehistoric deer. No, Tim goes, Tim goes, dude, I have 300 pounds of red deer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, I got it. How do you pronounce deer? It's a dare. This guy's words. Why can't you say words properly? You say dare. I've ever seen. It's not even indigenous to here. They brought in some fucking red-tailed prehistoric deer. No, Tim goes, Tim goes, dude, I have 300 pounds of red deer. Dare. Red dare. <laughs> dare. Don't eat, don't eat deer. That's the new dare, right? <laughs> red dare. Dare. Brent Brian says deer and he says dare. That was so weird. One more time. I want to hear that one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. Fucking red-tailed prehistoric deer. No, Tim goes, Tim goes, dude, I have 300 pounds of red deer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, I got whatever you need. Sausage? And I have access to a well, and I'll cut your throat, you know? So I'm not, I, it's a little aggro. It's a lot of, it's I, a lot I of think energy. You know what it is, bud? No, I think you're too soft for Texas. I'm too old for Texas. I'm a little too old. Oh, see, I don't think it's an age thing. Yeah. I just think it's a you thing, right? But, no, but you... You are, you are, when we were, we were with just eating with Tim Kennedy and some other people. So Brian Callen's comedy involves self-deprecation, right? It involves, I'm not a man. It's all that fucking shtick. It's hacky. It's annoying. It's not funny. But at least he's got a little anger he's going for. Brendan's comedy involves just him insulting Brian. You're too old. You're too soft. You're a cuck. That's all he, that's his only fuck. He can't even, Brendan is so what's that thing called thin skinned he can't even do self-deprecating humor on stage taking the piss out of himself because brian's offering up himself as a sacrifice to get jokes and laugh at hey i'm such a dweeb i'm such a pussy if i bought a gun the gun would weigh more than me i'd lose it i mean he's doing all this self-deprecating humor to get the crowd on his side so they can laugh at him and in in you know um in the process they'd all be laughing in general Brennan is so insecure, so thin-skinned, so lacking any comedic chops, he can't even be self-deprecating. Nah, there is no such thing. He just fucking starts insulting Brent, Brian. Oh, you're a pussy, you're a cuck. It's like, yeah, I know, I'm saying it myself. You don't need to re-emphasize it. Kind of rough, you know, and they were talking about pushing themselves until they throw up, because that's how you're supposed you're to train. lactic acid Apparently, levels yeah, and you shit. Have to, you have to push. You have to push, and then you'll. You, if you get to a point where you're you, you're going into convulsions and you're drooling, push harder. <laughs> and they kept going. Which, what 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 intervals are you doing to reach that? Yeah. You don't mind me asking. I don't think you know what you were doing, but you were doing this. Your hands were lightly touching your chest. You were like, you were just like, oh, I don't like this conversation. I know because I didn't care. No. You see, Brian's trying to give him the invitation to be self-deprecating. And put his hand on his chest and be like, oh, you were acting like a bit of a pussy. You were like a bit scared and shocked by his big, bad fucking UFC fighter. But he doesn't even take the invite. No, I just didn't care. It's like, bro, take the invitation to be self-deprecating. Self take the invitation to fucking rib yourself a little bit. To laugh at yourself a little bit. And be like, hey, I'm, fu I'm fucking a former UFC fighter. And I was freaked out by how they're training. Like, guys, you guys need to calm down. You're making me look bad. No, you're just like, I didn't care. Oh, yeah, so that, that's the only thing about Texas that I, uh, sorry, I, I say it the way it's supposed to be said, but uh, <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, I just don't see you as a Texas guy. I, I, I'm definitely not going to wear a fucking cowboy hat. And Ooh, then, I would. You're not allowed to wear a cowboy hat unless you fucking wrangle cattle or you're from Texas. If you wear a cowboy hat, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's the guy with the cowboy hat. Good shot, hey. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing worse than I got myself some Luke, Lucchese boots. Is that what they, is that it? Is, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody's like, bullshit. That's the other thing. You fucking wear Lucchese, it's like, fuck you, fry. It's like, oh, God. I don't, what, what are the cool boots? Who makes the best boots? Big up M M J Big M up to bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. Oops. I beat the fucking microphone there, but big up M H Susio.
We're in that little B thing, right? Little B, right? Big up, big up, big up, M.H. Susio. Luque is okay, right. number one. That's not very Texas. That's very Italian. Luque is he? Some fucking Italian from Sicily came down and goes, Luque is he? And, and, right? That's America. That's fucking America. I'm from Texas. These are my Luque is he boots. <laughs> Now, Brendan, you and I are both well, taking a little break. Well, let's take a little break. Let's I take a break. Get fucked. Get fucked. Talking a lot. But you're here now. I'm here, buddy. You came to Austin for a reason. Yeah. Do you like being on stage? Because there's a room where you quit comedy. Uh, I didn't quit. Mm. I need a break. Yeah. Yeah, I need a break. Depressing, isn't it? Can we make some jokes, please? This is depressing, isn't it? There's a rumor you quit comedy. Didn't you say you quit? so fucking bizarre this whole i didn't quit i quit i didn't quit thing i find all of it so fucking odd like okay you didn't quit we don't give a fuck really do it don't do it we don't care but this whole like i quit then i don't quit is so odd like it's so it's such an attention seeking thing isn't it what's wrong with the stream am i lagging no i'm not am i lagging Am I lagging? I'm here. What are you talking about? Can you guys see me on the stream? Or are you guys fucking taking a piss? Can you guys not see me? It's streaming still now. I'm online. It says I've got excellent connection. Can you guys see me or not? Did I get shut down? What happened? Did I get shut down? What happened? Am I am I still online or not? Let me see. Let me see. Did I get shut down? Is that why people are saying that the stream is gone? It looks okay to me here. Let me know in the stream chat if I'm still here. Am I still here in the stream chat? Let me know. Am I still here or not? Am I still here? Can you guys see me? What's happening? Am I dead? It's perfectly fine. Why are you guys acting like I've got cancelled? I'm still here. Hello? Can you guys see me? What are you guys talking about? No problem, exactly, no problem with the stream. Why is everyone saying that I'm off? Better, back. Can you hear me now? The chat is lagging, really? Is it? Huh? It was bad, really? It cut off for about a minute. Okay, my bad, apologies. It was lagging. The chat is slow too. This is perfectly fine here. I don't have any encoding error. The CPU usage is super low. Really? But I'm good now. Okay, cool. I'm good now. Okay, fair enough. Wow. You were off for a lot of us, but you're back now. Okay, cool. I'm back now. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Or, or is it just that you like coaching your kids? Yeah, I like being with the kids. I hate leaving the kiddos. Yeah, I, I wish they could see your children. I wish Brian Callen does this so well, but it's so gross. The way he sucks up to Br Brendan is so fucking disgusting. These little fucking alley oops he gives him. You not quit comedy. You just wanted to be. You just wanted to be the best dad ever, right? It's like, bro, we know why he fucking quit. Let's be real. They could see that your children look like they were. They were. It's laggy, really. It's not lag oh, Okay, I'm going to check my phone. I think you guys are taking the piss out of me. I'm going to check it on my phone. I don't think it's laggy at all. It's perfectly fine. It, I don't see any issue on my, on my side of the computer and stuff. Okay, let me see my channel. Let me see.
It's not like like what's going on here? It's not laggy. Why are everyone saying it's laggy? Protecting their agents. Brendan loves his kids so much. Oh, big up Josie. I didn't see you there. Um, Brendan loves his kids so much. His last special should have been called Fuck My Fam. <laughs> exactly. Fuck my family. Fuck those kids. <laughs> That's what it should have been called, right? That famous Michael Jordan quote. Fuck them kids. Um, this 1,000 times better skit than those two Redax. Are you guys trolling me? Am I getting trolled here? Because it's perfectly fine. Anyway, I'll just continue. I'll just continue. Hopefully, it's it's not laggy for some of you guys. But I've got no issues on my end. My CPU usage is super low. I've got no encoding errors, fucking warnings. Bread in a Nike sports lab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking... Uh, his child, who's seven, came to watch the podcast. And the, the, the kid sat down. And I believe he... He's seven, so he, he weighs about 20 pounds more than me, I think. And it's all in his legs, I, I, his fucking thighs and his hands. He just had, I've never seen anything like it. He's got a full beard. It's fucking insane, man. Should I say something about the crowd or should I just be kind and keep it moving? It gets laggy when the video plays. Really? I'm checking now my phone. It does look laggy to me. I think it's you guys' internet. Honestly, it looks perfectly fine on my phone. When I play on my phone, it's not laggy at all. I think it's you guys' internet. Some, For once, it's not me. For once, it's not me. For once, it's you guys. My internet is fine. I swear to God. It's not laggy at all when I play on my phone. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's not me. It's you. And then th He's unpeptized. Yeah, he's unpeptized. He's unpeptized. He looks like it, but he's playing... What is he playing? Like they're, He plays with like 14-year-olds or some yep. shit. Yep. It's insane. So, yeah, I can understand that. And you coach both their... He, Football and baseball. Yeah, yeah, and he's got a pinch. By the way, he doesn't coach his kids' teams. He coaches his kids which is still not coaching. Every dad is supportive of their child. So he's acting as if he like coaches the teams. He doesn't coach the teams. He coaches his kid. One kid, by the way. I don't think Boston is into sports. That's why he doesn't really talk about him. Tiger's one, I guess, all the limelight. He's clearly his favorite. But come on, man. Let's, let's relax with the coaching shit. Oh, for both of them, right? Yeah. Is that your retirement plan? <laughs> I guess I'll bad bet isn't it though like chances are like listen have he's you great. seen your kid he's got a fucking i, know, I can see i know but shoes. He's is he actually hoping his kid becomes a professional M mlb player so that he can retire on that like is that really the goal isn't that a definition of a helicopter parent like your, your kid's not even enjoying the sport for enjoyment's sake you're just hoping he signs one of those multi-million dollar fucking contracts that baseball players get fucking hell bro He's not even playing for fun. His dad's putting all the pressure on him to fucking make it. A jaw. I mean, it's I, unbelievable. I don't know if the NFL's for him. Do you know many Mexicans in the NFL? Well, he's got... He, your, your wife is no joke. Her brother's an athlete. Oh, come on, man. Yuck. Is that an LA thing? Like, just like glazing. That's like a full-time occupation. Who does this? I don't even talk about my friend's girlfriends like this. Oh my God, your girlfriend's fucking amazing. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, why are you thinking about her like that? Why are you talking like, yuck. Brian talks more glowingly about Brendan Schaub's kid than his own kid. Do you know how cringe that is? Does Brian wax lyrical about his own kid? V the same way he talks about Brendan's kid. It's almost like he wants Brendan's kid to be his kid. So yucky. Talk about your wife as well. Like, why are you talking about his wife? Your wife's a beast. What about your wife? Is your wife a beef? A, a beef. A beast? <laughs> and then there's you. I feel like your genes washed. Like, your son is beautiful, but he looks like you had sex with you. <laughs> oh, you mean, you mean like Brock Lesnar's daughter? <laughs> yes, it's, that, it's the Brock. Wow. Honestly, I really do hope Brock Lesnar finds this clip. Hopefully somebody sends this clip to Brock Lesnar and he goes at Brendan. 
I'd love to see it. I'd love to see Brock Lesnar pull up on Brendan and put the put the fucking fear of God in him because he talks all this shit about people and then says he's the nicest guy in the world. Look at that. Why would you mention that? They're talking about you, poking fun at you and you the completely diverted somebody else. Hope somebody sends this to Brock Lesnar. Hope somebody does send it to Brock Lesnar and he pulls up on Brendan and he starts like fucking backtracking like he always does. I really do hope somebody sends this to him. Lesnar is the Brock Lesnar phenomenon. You know when she came out, Brock's like, okay, okay, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. I see shot put in her future. Yeah. Fuck yeah. What a piece of shit. He's got a daughter already, right? So you, you'd you imagine if you've got a daughter, you'd be a bit sensitive of all that sort of stuff because there's no, you know, what about if his daughter turns out to look like him with a wig? He, he would probably be a little bit upset about that too. So you'd be a bit sensitive about that. But no, here he is trashing another man's, da another man's daughter's fucking looks and shit. Great. Great guy. Never met him. That woman's that poor amazing. Girl, heavy lies the crown. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a guy out there. I mean, I, I is want... Is there? Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> is there's a, there? There's a large black man out there. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. No, he... Why was that so funny to him? <laughs> Why was that so funny? Oh, that's true. Come on. Come on. Racism. No, here's the thing. <laughs> No, but that, that is... That Microphone slap on the leg. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Right on cue. That's the viral clip they're going to put on social media. Big up, Stradley. Brendan's transition from maddies and baddies to daddy has been remarkable. <laughs> exactly, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Addies and baddies, football jerseys, whiskey, right? Um, Porsches, Ferraris. Now it's pickup trucks, <laughs> car merch, right? daddy coaching days home that uh, homebody <laughs> it's actually quite good point Stradley very very good point very very good point <laughs> now he's a beast of a dad right now he's a beast of a dad who fucking you know flips his fucking pickup truck woman is amazing and she's I want the children whoever she chooses as her mate I would love one of those children. They're going to take over the world. I They're going to fucking... I know. I'm just going to have a grain mill outside my house and just, just the child will push the mill until until the child's ready to run through fucking offensive lines. It must be cool. Uh, defensive lines. It must be cool for Brock, though, because he probably wanted a boy, got the girl, but she just happens to be a fucking freak. Yeah. yeah. He... Wow. So you're calling her a man? Yo, Brendan is talking very reckless about Brock Lesnar. Like, what's the deal here? Do they have beef or something? Fucking hell. Let's see if he keeps the same energy. Hopefully somebody sends this clip to fucking Brock Lesnar. Let's see if he keeps the same energy because he's going hard. Fucking hell. This is so unnecessary. Like, you don't want to play with the doll? She's like, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, it's true. What's funny about the shot put is, like... You know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't Physical know if that's comedy. worth spending your time doing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can throw a cannonball farther than fucking anybody. It's like, okay, you know, fuck off. Like, if that was on a resume, I'd be like, ah, you don't get the job. Like, choose a job that pays the bills. Yeah, it's a, it's, I mean, it's a weird. Like stand-up comedy. Like doing fucking live podcast shows sitting on stools. Let's do that instead, right? Instead of instead of becoming a professional shot for her, instead of flying around the world, instead of representing your country, instead of setting records, instead of meeting people around all around the world from all places of what from all walks of life. Let's do this instead, right? Let's tell unfunny jokes on stage. Let's be a washed up has been Joe Rogan nut hugger and tell fucking phys and do physical comedy hacky jokes that we've been doing since we were fucking twenty one. Let's do that instead. Yeah. All right. Cool. Sport to it specialize is. in. Yeah. And it wasn't the first person just like, just fucking go like this. And some guy's like, no, dude, you got to fucking. Let's repeat. Yeah, look at this. Look at look at Mr. Parrot. Look at Mr. Repeater. Repeater of the joke. Look at Brendan repeating the joke. Brian just did that. Yeah. Really twerk into uh, it, yeah, bro. Twerk. You know? That's true. Like whoever decided this is how it started. And then somebody went. You Let's do it fuck. again. One more you time. Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, an inter that's such an interesting evolution. No, bro, you fucking, I figured it's it out. It's the torque. <laughs> <laughs> that, guy, that guy who introduced it took a risk. Brian's breathing so heavily now. I know. His buddies are like, you're really gay, dude. 
twirling around like that? Yeah, it's definitely not a sport you can make a movie about. Like, there's no way to build, like... Also, there's no you know money I mean? in it. There's no... Okay. You got this! I can't kiss. My chalk. But, <laughs> 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 I, but also... The, woo! You know? But I'll, there's also no benefits to it. Like, if you walked up into the hottest steakhouse in the fucking, in Austin. Yeah. You're like, you, well, I know we don't have reservations, but number one shot putter in the world. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. Get the fucking back in the line. Right. Yeah. It's almost the equivalent of being able to throw throwing stars. You know, like that guy fucking shreds you with. Jesus Christ. What is going on? What the fuck is this? You know what's funny about this show? Let me just, let me just tell you this. You know what's funny? They're they're actually trying to be funny. And it's still terrible. They're actually attempting to put on a show for the fans. And it's still shit. But the TFAT K show, they just sit there and read stuff on Google and stuff, right? And it's still terrible. So imagine that. They do the other way on when they record it in the studio, trying to make it a fucking serious show by not making it funny. But then when they get on stage, they try and make it funny and it's still terrible. So both routes end at the same place. A terrible fucking show. I don't know how the... Their fans, they've got to do this more often. They've got to thank the fans because I don't know how their fans stick with them. Because the content is so garbage. Stars. Maybe not, but you know what I mean. But also, why, but also, why doesn't Brock put her in fucking MMA? Why also, no big bitch wrestling? That, that's such a, right? that's such a good idea. I agree with you. Some pig tape. Why isn't that big bitch wrestling? <sighs> Please, somebody send this to Brock Lesnar. Why isn't that big bitch wrestling? Please, somebody send this to Brock Lesnar. I'd love to see Brendan backtracking and fucking copping please when Brock Lesnar puts it on him. I hope to God this gets to Brock Lesnar. I really do hope it does. I fucking mean, wrestle, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, that would. I wrestle, bitch. Or like center, like she's like Icebox from Little Giants. She's yeah. She's a don't. It's a deep cut. Uh, if you know Icebox, do, yeah. do you know? Do you know what? Yeah, I'm doing? you guys know Icebox. Think of her big ass down there, fucking like Icebox, dude. I'm I'm not I'm not actually getting involved in this conversation because I'm that afraid of Brock, even though he's not here. Like I don't want to. I'm not trying to meet. You're fun. such a pussy. I am a pussy because I could. He could. Randy Couture still wants to whoop our ass. I am. I, I love him. And I, I also love him. I feel so bad about that, but we yeah, love him. well, but. Um, so you're so you just you so you you uh you're here for your kids because you want them to be. Uh, I'm missing too much it's shit. My, it's just my, not worth the squeeze yeah. anymore. I, like yeah, it's just not it's just not fun for me anymore. My right son now. is gonna right be, now. Yeah. That's so depressing. It's not fun. Why don't you want to put on shows for your fans? Why don't you want to try and be funnier? Why don't you want to get on stage and share your jokes? I love how these guys. As soon as the money dries up, as soon as they can't sell tickets, I don't want to do stand up anymore. Why can't you just go to open mics? Why can't you just do spots randomly just to kind of test out some jokes, right? Get some fucking stage time. Practice your craft. Become funnier. Nah, this doesn't pay well enough. It doesn't help me fly around the country. I can't go, you know, get some addies and baddies. I'm not doing it anymore. I love it. I love these guys. I love how transparent they are. As soon as it doesn't make money, no more stand-up. This whole love of stand-up and wanting to have specials and wanting to go on SNL, it's all fucking a ruse. It's all just a money-making scheme. Love it. My son's going to be a comic. That, and not, well, an, not an athlete. Not an athlete. What? Yeah, I know. He's, got, he's built exactly like me, a little longer-legged. And uh, I, I looked at your son. I have to say, I was like, man, that's it, genetic. I looked at your son. I was like, man, I, I wish my son... Honestly, who talks about their kids like this? Even if your son was not athletically gifted as the next one, You'd still big up whatever they did. You wouldn't put down your son in order to lick the ass of a... This is so gross. Like, this is so fucking gross. Have some dignity. Have some pride in your own kid, man. In your seed. You're fucking sucking off another kid's dick and shit, which is already questionable. But, you know, considering the allegations around Brendan, this makes a lot of sense. Or around Brian, this makes a lot of sense.
to a real thing because my son. But my you knew son, that when my our kids and your kids play dodgeball, right? I did see that because my son was like, my son was like, oof, it's ugh, awfully. I, uh. <laughs> And I was like, I get it. Like, he understands. He's just, he's and, like, then, and then he got hit, and he grabbed the ball and went underneath the rafters and was staring. But, but, but dude. And I go, what the fuck are you doing? He goes, I'll get them. <laughs> he's, actually, he's actually fucking hilarious. That's what kills me. It's the weirdest thing. The way he thinks of funny, like, he just, like, I was sitting there with my buddy, and uh, he's right next to me, and we're FaceTiming, and we're about to hang up, and he goes, Dad? I go, what? He goes, can I ask you a question? I go, yeah. And he goes, and it's okay if you don't want to answer. I go, what's up? He goes, is that your boyfriend? <sighs> nah, man. This can't be real. This can't be real. This can't be real. This can't be real. This cannot be real. Holy shit. Holy shit. And I was like, no. And he goes, touchy subject? Oops. <laughs> so he just does funny. these little fucking things, man. And he just fucks with me, too. And he fucks with me. I'm just, he'll just, but you uh, want him to be something else. You want him to be like Brock Lesnar's daughter. I remember Brian was well, FaceTiming no, I, with him. He's, so he's like, and I, Brian was putting a show on for me. He's like, did you get your push-ups in? And he's all, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, he he will train. I will separate him from his mother at uh, in about one year. Yeah, he's going to he's going to be he will be a Spartan. Like the movie Three Hundred. Yes, I'll shoot him, him out. I'm going to shoot him full of peptides. That's right. And when he's uh, when he's finally able to shave, he'll be, he'll see his mother once again. But in the meantime, he'll. This is incredible, man. Honestly, the the fighting the kid fans deserve. A lot of credit for putting up with this. These guys take their fans for granted. All of these years, and this is the level of comedy that they have. This is a level of chemistry that they have. This is the this is the type of show that they put on. All these years these guys have been performing, have been doing pods together, have been quote unquote talking for a living. And this is what you give your fans. They deserve more than this. They take them for granted. I swear to God, this is fucking terrible terrible understand that solitude is the only thing to keep him warm at night <laughs> my son my son will do me proud and in this family we play to win and he's like ah, fuck off he doesn't care yeah. yeah good point griffin sizemore they don't deserve any credit the fans put they put themselves through it it's got to be a different strokes of different folks thing because i can't even what is funny about this what's f like imagine trying to get drunk to this imagine trying to get fucked up to this like it's not even fun like what what are you doing sitting there having jaeger bombs sitting there having fucking zambuka like how do you make this fun necking back some whiskey how do you make this fun i wouldn't even want to drink just get this over and done with so i can go somewhere else so anyway, yeah, different different genetics or what? what different. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. But here we are. You and I have been been through. It's interesting. We appreciate you guys coming out because it's, it's we're gonna do pick, we're gonna do questions soon. But what are we doing? It's twelve years, bud. Yeah, I think twelve so. years, and then we kind of went down our separate paths, and then we're yeah. coming back. Yeah, now we're coming I mean, back. we never stopped doing Firing the Kid. Yeah, we never separate stopped. Separate paths. Why, why did you go down your separate paths? Can you explain why you went down your separate paths, please? Can you explain why? Can you let us know why you took a bit of a break in between and why you had two black guys sitting next to you for a while, then a white guy, then another white guy, then another two black guys? Can you understand? Then one black guy. Can you let us know what happened? What happened? Well, we stopped performing together. Yeah, I know. I know it was, it was uh, that's what happens with your life. It's funny as you guys get older and you have children and you get these things, you, you, you find that you will be taken over there. And what you, what happens a lot of times, if you have something that's magical, if you're doing something, you won't know it until you lose it. That's what's fucking weird. You will not know how special, like you can be in a time, like we were in, I believe, cause I'm, I'm now old enough to know cause I've been through, I've been doing standup for 30 years. There was a, He's been doing stand-up for 30 years. Oh my God. 
And this is how shit, this is what I mean about stand up comedy, bro. 30 years. That's what you see there. 30 years of stand up. And that's the level he's at. Wow. Wow. 30 years. And he legitimately hasn't got one good special under his belt. Not one. Not one single one. Fuck. Time between 2016 and 2020, right before COVID, that was really 2015, that was a renaissance. Special, it yeah. was a renaissance for comedy. I would, we would walk into the green room and it's, it'd be Joe Rogan, Bill Burr, Sebastian Maniscalco, Tom Segura, Bert Kreischer. Joey. It'd be, it'd, everybody, Chris D'Elia, it'd be, Theo. It'd, and that was the, Theo Vaughn, it would, that was the lineup every night. And you could, you could watch that for $23 every night. It'd be a Tuesday, for real. That's what it was like. Yeah, because everyone lived in LA. Then when everyone got cancelled for their fucking, you know, sexual escapades and their harassment and rapes and kitty diddling, that's why it changed. I like how they're acting as if the whole comedy scene changed when really and truly a couple of people got accused of some crazy shit and everyone disses themselves to them because why would you want to hang around with Chris D'Elia and Brian Cannon if you're actually trying to sell tickets, if you're actually trying to be a star, if you're actually trying to make it, if you're actually trying to get stuff greenlit by studios and stuff, why would you willingly do shows and content with those two guys? They're radioactive. I love how they're acting as if like the whole comedy scene kind of crumbled and broke. No, it didn't. It splintered a bit. The, the the New York scene, by all accounts, is still going strong. There's some people in Austin. There's some people in LA. It's still where it, it's still the same, basically. Just Joe's in Austin. They're acting as if it's completely changed. Big up, Winger Singers. What is it with Rink's rapey cadence whenever he does his stand-up comedy? Also, bean cheese, 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 bean cheese. Oh, got it there with that fucking stopping. Big up, Winger Singers. Appreciate you. Yeah. That fucking cadence is annoying. The way he says stuff is annoying. The man stuff is annoying. The fucking the way he stands is fucking annoying. I fucking hate it all. I hate it all. He's so fucking terrible. 30 years of stand up, and this is how quote unquote funny you are. And then Ron, Ron White was coming. That was five years, six, seven years. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Dan P. Maybe, to be fair, to be fair to them. Can we say this as an assumption or as a guess? Maybe the Bobby Lee drama did way more to damage these guys' reputation. Big up uh, Mexican Salsa. Have you watched Joe Rogan stand up? He is even worse. He yells and humps the stool while not being one bit of funny. I'm going to disagree with that. I've seen some Joe Rogan clips recently featured on the Joe Rogan subreddit. He's actually funny. He actually tries to write jokes. Not, it, might not be to, it might not be your taste in comedy. But Rogan is definitely a student of the game. You can tell he watches specials. You can tell he spends time on his act. You can tell he's always willing and, you know, ready to go on stage and get more sets in, under his belt and hone his craft. He actually cares about the, the art of stand-up, quote-unquote. That's why he talks about it so much. So the comedy might not be for you, but Rogan actually works well at it, personally, in my opinion. I think he's way funnier than Brendan than Brendan than Brendan O'Brien put together to be fair. Um but I was just about to say what DP said about Bobby Lee. Or sorry, what Dan P said about Bobby Lee. Do you guys think this is a fair assumption to make? Do you guys think maybe the Bobby Lee shit had more an effect in ostracizing these guys from the whole comedy scene than Brian getting accused of rape, than the truck walk thing with fucking Brendan? Then the Crystalia Kitty did the allegation. Maybe that Bobby Lee thing is actually the thing that fucked them because Bobby Lee, by all accounts, is very well loved. Everybody loves Bobby Lee. Rogan famously said, "If you've got a problem with Bobby Lee, I have a problem with you." You know. So maybe it was Bobby Lee drama that fucked them. Maybe. What do you guys think? I'm starting to believe the Bobby Lee drama fucked them more than all the fucking controversies. You know that they've been through themselves. Maybe the Bobby Lee thing is what really, really fucked them. To that, over and over, and, and everybody was innovating. Everybody was trying to do different things. Nobody was that famous yet. Nobody was that. No, it wasn't that meteoric rise. It was just everybody it's still had that time, hunger. Yeah. yeah, and you don't. And then we'd all hang out. Yo, big up, 
Victor in Japan. Victor alone in Japan. Rogan is good at writing and performing, but Hess not funny. He has no sense of humor and takes himself very seriously. Jokes yeah. go over his head all the time. No, you, you're you're hundred percent right there. I think Rogan on the podcast is weird. I don't know when he decided. It's definitely a decision that he made consciously to be serious on the pod. He doesn't like people fucking around on his pod. He likes some people fucking around, but not all the time. He wants to be serious. That's his that's his prerogative. It's his podcast. He can do what he wants. But I definitely do think that Rogan definitely is funnier. Like I would, if you had to, like again, this is a fucking terrible, you know, thing to put out there because it's all bad options. But if you give me fifty dollars and I had to spend fifty dollars to either watch Brian Callen, Brendan Shaw, but Joe Rogan, I'm always going to pick the Joe Rogan ticket. Always, I'm always going to spend fifty dollars, whatever it is, to watch Rogan. I'd always do that, and I think I'd probably have a better time listen to him rant about fucking dinosaurs and ancient Egypt and shit, right? And Kylie Jenner. Like, I'd actually, I think you're going to have a way better time watching Rogan do stand-up than fucking Brian Callan or Brendan, in my personal opinion. Then after that, we'd all be together and we'd be in the parking lot laughing till two in the fucking morning being still... We got Mexican salsa. Great point. I agree with you 100%. Bobby Lee was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was the beginning of the end. Yeah, I, I honestly think it was because I don't listen to Bobby Lee content as much as I used to. I used to listen to Bad Friends all the time. I don't really listen to it too much like that anymore. But it is fair to say that Bobby Lee is very well loved across the board. People just love Bobby Lee. So I think they very much misread that whole situation. They thought they could bully. And I think another thing as well that I've been thinking about, I've said this before, but I honestly don't think Rogan knew how much those guys name dropped him or how much they use the Rogan friendship to kind of, you know, puff their chest up in LA. Because I think Bobby Lee spoke about it, how the comedy club was a bit of a boys club, right? The comedy store was a bit of a boys club. So, but I think Rogan wasn't aware of it. He probably had his head buried in the sand. But when the whole Bobby Lee drama went down and he found out that Brian Callan and Joe, sorry, Brian Callan and Brendan were using his name and basically telling him, Bobby Lee, hey, we're gonna get we're gonna get Brian, Joe Rogan on you. He's not gonna talk to you anymore. That was basically using his name as a threat to kind of intimidate him. I think Rogan was like pissed, like, what the fuck? He didn't know that what was going on. So I think automatically he was like, you know what? I'm gonna put an end to this. I don't want these people to get the assumption that I'm with these guys. And I'm sure I've got a feeling he called Bobby Lee and said, Look, I didn't tell them anything. This I didn't know about this. This is just them being fucking idiots. I'm with you. And I think everybody, unfortunately, in the background sided with Bobby Lee and those guys got ostracized because it's no coincidence that they're the only ones complaining. Big up Theodore. Brian just wants to live, laugh and love. Oh, <laughs> and work for Stephen Chowder. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Work for an actual like abuser. Do you know what I mean? An actual bully. He's always got questionable work colleagues, Brian Callan, isn't it? From Chris D'Elia to fucking Brendan Shaw to Sam Tripoli. He loves a good questionable work colleague. Geese. And, and then that goes away. It just went well, away with COVID. COVID. Well, COVID. Came... COVID didn't take it away. You getting accused of rape and trying to bully Bobby Lee took it away, you fucking redact. Hit, COVID hit, then the Me Too movement hit. Yep. And then... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The party was over there. And, and then I was there. like, where'd all my friends go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Where'd happens. everybody go? What happened? Yep. Yeah. Addies and baddies. Kalila, Annie Liederman. What about your own controversies? I like how he's, he keeps mentioning the, the Me Too thing. What about your own controversies, Brendan? What about Addies and Baddies? What about the BGL thing? What about the Bobby Lee thing? What about the Kalila thing? What about the Annie Liederman thing? Just, it, it, it literally, Whitney Cummings. The, the chaperones came in and said, you guys are having too much fun. Fuck off. Too powerful. And everybody was a good person. Too powerful? Huh? So Brendan thinks it was some sort of conspiracy by the higher ups to take them down. <laughs> Too powerful. What? At the end of the day, everybody, yeah. the, the fun we were having was innocent. It was fucking beautiful and artistic. Everybody and was a good all person. All we did as a group was make thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people laugh. Yeah. Whether it was on podcasts. Well, I'm talking about all of us, not me and Brendan, but everybody. That's all we did, right? Yeah, but you also abuse some women. Big up Wingus McDingus. Have to disagree with you as I'd rather see Brendan any day over Joe Rogan. Can you point me to a funny Joe Rogan stand-up part? 
I've not laughed at anything that Roided Midget has ever said. Come on, Wingus McDingus. Okay, bro. People in the stream chat, come on. Let's be real. Let's be real. Let's put our hate for Brendan to one side. Let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real. Please, guys, in the stream chat, be honest. You've got $100 to spend on a ticket and some drinks. Are you honestly telling me you're going to buy a Brendan Shaw ticket over Rogan? Come on, be for real. Be for real. You're going to spend $100 to go watch fucking Brendan do stand-up. Really? You have to choose one between Brian Callen, Brendan and Joe Rogan. I'm choosing Rogan all the time. I prefer to hate watch of Shaw. Wow. Okay. Yeah, exactly, Assad. Yeah, exactly. Good point. $100 for a ticket um, to see Rogan. You're watching him with bin binoculars and a Bud Light. <laughs> That's very true. But still, I'm doing it. This community is completely redacted. <laughs> exactly. Big got few keep. Yes. I have been... I've seen Rogan live in his... Really? Super sure said, I've seen Rogan in his, live in his prime in 2012. He was pure shit. Dark Web J, I'm going to buy 100 bucks worth of drinks. <laughs> wow, you guys are really surprising me. I'm watching Rogan all day long. Give me $100, I'm watching Rogan from the bleachers, from the fucking nosebleeds. That's why I'm fucking watching Rogan. I don't care. I'm sneaking in drinks. I'm hiding a fucking bottle of vodka up my fucking asshole. I'm not watching Brendan. Come on, man. You guys are fucking crazy. Watch him do mic taps on his leg and shit. Watch Callan do, I'm a man, running through the fucking field like a horse. Nah, fuck that. Yeah, Josie, $100 for Rogan, try $400. Okay, cool. <sighs> nah, you guys, are, you, you, you guys are redacted. I'm sorry. You guys are redacted. If you're going to pick, if you're going to watch Brendan over Joe Rogan, you guys are fucking redacted. You're letting your hate for rope for Brendan cloud your fucking decision. No way in any way, shape or form am I spending any money to watch Brendan Shaw do stand-up. Do stand-up. After seeing fucking you be surprising and go happy. Would you, would you willing, honestly, guys, think about this. Would you willingly put yourself while watching Ro Brendan do stand-up after watching you be surprised and go happy? Are you really going to do that? Like, think about that. You have to sit there and listen to him talk about fucking Mexican fucking cookies and shit. Really? Really? <laughs> Come on, man. Josie, I've seen Rogan twice, 2016, 2018, wouldn't go again, but he can be funny. Exactly, Josie. I'm not saying Rogan is fucking Dave Chappelle. I'm not saying he's fucking whatever, whoever you want to put out there that you like. But at least you know you're going to have, it's, it's, you're going to have the novelty. Oh shit, that's the guy on the podcast that I see all the time. Cool. And you're going to maybe get a couple of laughs in the show that you're going to, you know, remember. But Brendan... <sighs> It was great. And then somehow it became, you know, it got weird. It got weird. It got weird. It got weird. Things got weird. Things yeah. got weird. And okay. then also, okay. I, what I didn't see come is when COVID hit, obviously, yeah, I'm just going to be on YouTube, but fuck it. YouTube starts just suppressing certain things. So I was super anti mass super anti... I just, I just wanted some more explanation why I want, had to get Why vaccinated. they were shutting down entire businesses. Yeah, I was very upset about it. And I was yeah. very vocal about Faceless it. Faceless bureaucrats. And YouTube went, cool story, and then fucking... This guy is utterly shameless. Utterly shameless. He's acting as if his anti-COVID stances, which were pretty tame, were the reasons why he's numbers on youtube went down as opposed to people discovering how much of a piece of shit he is this is the thing with these guys right they all think they're being shadow banned they all think they're being cancelled by the big you know bad social media companies algorithms are working against them but most of the guys that say this sort of stuff are either like Shaw, they're incredibly unlikable or they're people who say really dicey shit so if you say really dicey shit, you shouldn't be surprised if you're shadow banned, if you get kicked off most fucking social media platforms, because these platforms don't want to deal with the hassle 
of having a lawsuit, having fucking, you know, bad, um, you know, having fucking um, the wrong kind of attention on their fucking brand. It makes sense why they'd kick someone like a Nick Fuentes off most of social media platforms. It makes sense, right? Even though it's fucking free speech, whatever it may be, but he's just too much of a liability. He causes too much issues, says too much racist shit, whatever. But if you're Nick Fuentes, you don't then start crying and complaining because your whole point of existence is that you want to say the most extreme dicey shit. If you want to say extreme dicey shit, okay, go find a platform where you can say that, but you can't say that on YouTube and, and Twitter. That should be, that shouldn't be like a big deal. You should be okay. Like if you're willing to say the dicey shit, you have to deal with the consequences. These guys, in my humble opinion, don't say anything that should, is worthy of somebody cancelling them. They straddle the fence. They're super safe. Especially in Brendan's case. Big up Mexican salsa. Is this a TED talk? Or comedy? Exactly. We're watching exactly. these two perform. Exactly. Lol, lol, beans and cheese. Exactly, exactly. And in Brendan's case, he doesn't even say anything. He kind of plays this like... Big up Theodore. They are talking as if they don't realise there are 30 to 40 homeless <laughs> cats in the crowd. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I don't think there's that many though. There might be a bit less. I don't think I don't think that many homeless cats would actually pay to watch this. I wouldn't anyway. Even though I I'll pay to no, actually I did pay to yeah, maybe there are some. Anyway. Brendan doesn't even say anything when it comes to his political views. He's too afraid to actually even though he's a conservative, he's too afraid to actually say anything conservative, to have any real conservative points of view. He just kind of like you know leans into the grift from time to time but he doesn't actually say anything worthy of getting cancelled right rogan is a bit more outright in some of his conservative fucking leanings and how he's basically become a little bit more right wing as he's become a bit older and got more money brendan doesn't say anything so this whole notion that the big bad algorithms counsel him is nonsense most likely what happened i think was a was a was a was a what's that thing called is it a convolence convolence it all kind of came to a head. So I think the cancellation happened at the same time in terms of the Me Too stuff, Brian Callan getting accused of rape, the Brendan stuff with Annie and Kalila, um, the Chris Alia shit, um, you know, all that getting exposed and people looking at that LA comedy crew like a bit weird, like, oh my God, these guys are full of creeps. And I'm also sure at the same time, the podcast bubble burst, right? All these things factored into it. The podcast bubbles burst, um, people, his special came out. People saw how terrible he was at comedy. Um, he put more of himself out on social media. People saw how much of a piece of shit he was. So confidence. Thank you, um, Victor, um, Victor in Japan. Confidence, right? I think those things all happen at the same time, and then boom, it happened at the same moment, and then you know, all the numbers went down. But I don't think it was a fucking shadow banning thing. I think if anything, more people just discovered how much of a piece of shit these guys are. And they're like, no, thank you. But, you know, COVID opinions, come on. Yeah. I called them every day for four months. Yeah, he's a maniac. He was calling them every day, literally every day. It was like it's harassment, but yeah. <laughs> learned that the hard way. <laughs> Money's low, right? Money's low. They're revealing quite a bit here, isn't it? They were really worried about their fucking monies on fucking YouTube. They must have took a big hit because if you go back to their YouTube on TFATK, you'll see their episodes used to get like half a million views and shit, even without Chris Talia and Will Sasso. So they must have been really feeling the kick from YouTube. One, you know, there must have been a time where they were getting like probably 20 grand plus from AdSense alone. Then it went to fucking five grand and like, oh shit. So I wouldn't be surprised if what he said there was actually true and he was trying to get a hold of fucking someone like YouTube because he was afraid of what was happening. Yeah, they didn't like that. I, I, the one good thing I, I'll say, and, and so thanks to a lot of you guys that stuck around, is that like we we can we still can do it, and I, it's still fun. And I feel like like the past six months doing the podcast has become fun and different Agreed. and exciting again. Agreed. That's what's weird. Maybe it's just because you go through some shit. Yeah, I think we both got too busy. Yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, like you know, that's like, <laughs> what too busy. Brendan hardly sells any tickets, always cancels his shows. Brian Callen also doesn't really sell that many tickets. Like, what What do you mean too busy? What were you guys doing? <laughs> what? Busy? I'm sitting on fucking a set doing a, 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 a sitcom. Yeah, he's fucking all that shit. It's just like, it's not... There's some Brian acting like he didn't want to do a sitcom. If someone gave him a sitcom right now, he'd run at the opportunity. Brian's always hated doing stand-up, I think. My, me personally. My theory is that Brian 
was always quote unquote he, he found stand up easy he took to it really easily but he never actually enjoyed doing it he always wanted to be an actor way more big up Asad Aziz don't forget the unique lawsuit had huge YouTubers like Moist Critical dunking on Shab and promoting the subreddit big point Asad Aziz I for totally forgot about that thank you for reminding me very very good point that unique lawsuit or lol suit as Brennan would say was super super decisive in terms of changing the perspective on these guys because if i'm not mistaken people weren't even defending unique as a person because people said oh unique is a bit of a bad dude he's done some questionable shit he's a bit of a drunk druggy whatever it may be they were like yeah put that to one side what you're doing is still worse do you remember that was a big thing people are like look even i'm sorry people are like unique has got his issues but what you're doing is fucked up so it really put Brendan in a bad light. He really misjudged that whole situation. And he got all those big YouTubers dunking on him. And if anything, it brought a whole new attention to Brendan. It kind of revived the Brendan trolling content, you know, community. And now we'll see all these big YouTubers making documentaries about fucking comedians and shit, mostly because of that unique lawsuit. That's the main reason. Very, very good point, Asad about like there's something about success when it becomes commercial that is uh is anti-artistic it's i think that to be if what? you want to stay Who's innovative artistic? and different and funny you've got to you've the only thing artistic about this fucking show is brian brendan's fucking air maxes there's nothing artistic about this show in the slightest artistic what it's got to feel a little bit like your clothing is too big for you. You can't be too cool. You can't be, you can't feel like you're too successful. Look at the person right next to you, brother. He's the complete antithesis of what you're talking about. He personifies what you're fucking talking about. He was a person that thought he was too cool. He thought he made it. Um, he thought he arrived. He fucking half-assed every fucking opportunity he got given and it all failed. If anything, that's a good thing because I think in life sometimes, People do get rewarded for absolute mediocrity and they do get rewarded for being assholes. I think it's actually good in life sometimes to have people like Brendan who do fall, even though I don't enjoy seeing him fail, I think it's a good thing that he got given all these opportunities and he fucked them and he paid the price. You know, we're seeing it in real time. I think it's good to see it because sometimes people like Brendan just get away with it. Like he just they just stumble through life and keep figuring it out. But we've seen clearly you know, everybody's left him alone. He doesn't perform at the comedy clubs anymore. He sold all his cars. He had to downgrade his house. You know, like all this sort of stuff has happened. Like clearly, you know, he's fired loads of people because he can't afford to pay their salaries anymore. Clearly, all those things he did in the past have definitely had an impact in how he is now. You can't, that, that attention, that public embrace sucks. <laughs> Do you remember one of the last things we did before COVID hit? Was, and this will never happen again. Remember when we went to the Spike Men Award shows? <laughs> it was I just sure awards for men. It was the Guy Awards and or something. It was the Guy's Award, yeah. and they invited the two of us. Yeah. And we sat through that, and I was like, dude, see you next year, not knowing. <laughs> yeah, fuck you that guys. Me too was coming. Yeah, that's right. That was the first thing they nixed. Yeah, that's right. right. Guy, the fucking guy thing. It was like a celebration of guys, remember? And then there was this guy, this little black guy who was uh, up there talking, and I go, who the... I love how they mention everybody's race. Love it. The fuck is that? It was Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Because <laughs> Brian's I'm like, how that, how'd that guy get I'm in? So I was old. like, you're... A I was like, you're a piece of shit. That yeah, is yeah, the yeah. best rapper on planet Earth. Yeah. That's Kendrick I had a, Lamar. I had a face like this. They go, what the fuck? Who the fuck? Hey, what, what is this? Yeah. It was like talking. the fuck is this guy? Fuck. I literally go, talk about short. I was doing that. I'm such a dick. No, and then remember, I judge a book by his And then comment. remember Joe Pesci won an award, like a lifetime award, and got on the mic and just spoke pure gibberish. Yes. Remember that? Yeah. They edited it out in the final yeah, shot. Yeah, you talking about that. Yo, big up MK. This does have a point. Shaub needs someone to prop him up to be even watchable on stage. Gringo Pappy had Schultz's help. Joke and cringe solo. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <sighs> anyway, let's just keep watching. We'll suffer together. We'll suffer together. Fuck it. <laughs> I don't know if it's the mic, but if he's talking like he's from Brooklyn, it's going to be way too fast. It was, yeah, a, it, was, it was two hours of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's two hours. Like, I was like, oh, what the fuck he said? Like, what is he saying? Yeah, that was interesting. So, mm. been well, through a lot, pal. Yeah, but here we are at the Vulcan fucking gas company. How we doing up there? <laughs> Woo! Fuck it. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank Way to prove your doubt was wrong, right? Way to come back from the fucking. Way to come back from the dead. Co a live podcast show at the Vulcan Comedy Club in Austin, Texas, where Rogan has his own club there, but didn't invite you to do the show at the fucking mothership. Instead, you're doing it at the Vulcan Gas Company. That's a way to show, you know, to come back from the dead, to prove your doubt was wrong, to rise up from the ashes like a phoenix, Vulcan, and not see fucking Rogan. Come on, I'm talking to them. You guys fucking... Thanks a lot, man. They're Should we in the open back. up the fan questions? I don't give a fuck. You guys let's, got some for us? Let's do it. Let's get weird. Fire away. Literally anything weird. you got. That's weird. the whole point for you. I haven't seen that Eskimo bro shirt in 10 years. Oh, dude. Dude, that's oh, an old geez. school fucking shirt. Me and, me, and, me and Dana got into it, and then I created merch. <laughs> Real piece of shit. Yeah, that was a fun one. We do need I know, we'll bring it back. I know, but I, we I didn't get... know, so it's the first show, but we'll be here every week. Also, here's the thing, every, I have to month. do all of it. I have to do all of it, I'm dealing with a you lot. Don't trust my, you don't trust my merch? No, man. <laughs> I, I could come up with something, like a Texas star, or like a, cro a CrossFit gym in a well. <laughs> Fucking trust. Dude, remember, like, hey, remember? On a horse, me no, rearing up. up on a horse? Remember when no? you tried... This fucking guy made Thin Boy merch? What a piece of shit. It was pretty good, though. It was all right. Thin Boy. Get off my nuts. T-H-I-N-N-N. -N -N. Woo! Innovative. I didn't sell one shirt. One thing I was like, fuck yeah, about time. Yeah. <laughs> all it was, right, like, it was just... a skeleton on a bicycle. Yeah. Way and to you, go, bro. And you don't ride bikes. All right, what do we got? No, I don't. What do you got, brother? Yeah. Yes, you, we were used to us on the street. We're the same. Go on. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I? No, you know. Oh, fucking hell. You hear what that guy said? He said he saw them on the street. He said, oh shit, that's Brian Callan and Joe and fucking Brendan Schaub. He, he, um, Brian Callan gave him a fist bump and said, what's up? And then Brendan looked at him like he was a pair of last year's Nikes. Fucking hell. Brendan truly does hate his fans. <laughs> he gave him a dirty look. He looked him up and down. Didn't, wasn't the warmest to him. Brendan, what a piece of fucking shit. <laughs> Brendan gave him the cold shoulder. He gave him a fucking... Oh, I fucking love it, man. Honestly, I love it. Also, I love that none of them... There's two mics on stage. I love that not one of them decided to go in the crowd and hand the mic to a fan, get close to them, maybe spud them, hug them a little bit, make it a bit of a show, join the fucking audience, or make them come up on stage and say the fucking question into the microphone. Let's just make them shout it from the fucking... from their seats, right? From their tables. That's a good idea, isn't it? Right? That's a good idea. Good preparation. Where's Chin? Because he was on the phone. I saw that. I clocked that. Oh, look at him fucking protecting Brendan. Jumping in front of Brendan. Can you tell... Can you let Brendan answer the question? Why he was a dick to that fan outside? Let Brendan explain why he was a dick. Why he didn't give the guy a fist bump. Why he didn't acknowledge him. And looked at him like last year's Nikes. Look at Brian fucking... Brian is the fucking human meat shield for fucking Brendan, isn't it? Brian is like... Brian is with Brendan, how Brendan is with Joe. Yeah. I clocked it because you were like that and you were excited. So I'm always like, thank you. And I want to make it a Cause, moment Because he you. doesn't have, I have to, so I have to deal with like the booking, all the guest he list. He does all the work. Making sure this is set up. Guest list. They have a guest list for this. Who's texting Brendan to get on a guest list to watch Chief Fat K live at the Vulcan Gas Company? What you have to be a you're even a bigger loser than these people. If you are one of Brendan's friends and you're texting for a guest list, you're a loser, bro. You're a loser. All this yeah. Brian just shows up. Yeah, and he's like this. He's like he's doing. And this. it's been that way for twelve years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. So good at Can you explain why you ignored him? Is that why you ignored him? Is Brent? Is Brian's fault? It's not your fault. Brendan's a true narcissist, isn't it? Hey, I saw you guys outside. 
Brendan Brian was nice and said hi. Brendan, you big time me and looked at me like I was last year's Nikes. And then Brendan's like, yeah, it's because I was too busy because I have to do all the work and Brian's lazy. Okay. Stressed out, and it's right before the show. I love you, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brian's like a lab. But I'm glad you called him out. Brian's like a Labrador. You know, he's just happy to see you. You do look, but sometimes when you meet people, you do look as though you're a little bit worried about what they're going to do to you. So I've, you kind of like go. I got trust issues. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to stab me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like, Reddit 2024. Reddit 2024. What does that have to do with it? Oh, so he's trying to mix the Trump 2024. Honestly, so cringe. You know, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're like my sister. Like, when I meet people, I smile right away. My sister and him, they just go like this. What's up, man? You know why, and this is sad, but people hey, are man. so mean to me on the internet, I assume you're going to be mean to me out there. Oh, <laughs> fucking pussy soy boy shit. He calls everybody else a soy boy, but imagine how soy boy that is. You're afraid of people that make fun of the dumb things you say online. That's all they do. They don't fuck with your sponsors. They don't even attack your shows in real life. They don't call in bomb threat. They don't do anything, right? They don't call SWATs after you. They poke fun at the dumb things you say. They take the piss out of your incredibly redacted pronunciation, your terrible fight picks, your horrible opinions, your redacted way that you fucking communicate with people and how you treat people. That's all they do. And you're afraid they might do something to you in public when you're a fucking former UFC heavyweight who knocked out Mirko Krokop, you're afraid of some Redditors. Honestly, can you get any more pathetic? And he does all this just to take away accountability from himself. To take away responsibility from himself for his own actions. Uh, the Redditors are so mean. Okay, can you tell me why they're so mean? Can you tell me why it's one of the most booming fucking subreddits out there? With over, I think, 100,000 people, 100,000 homeless cats on there. Can you tell us why these guys waste so much time picking a, picking you apart? Why they want to highlight every dumb, awful thing that you say? Can you tell us why? Is there a reason why all these grown adults take the time out of their day to clip up some of the dumb things that you say? Is it because you might be a bad person? Is it? Could that be possible? Could you be actually as bad as they say you are? Could that be the reason why you get all that hate online? Could that be the reason? And could you also be possible, sorry, could you also be the person that could change the narrative around you straight away if you if you were a decent person, if you decided to kind of, you know, look within, look yourself in the mirror and maybe think, okay, hey, I'm going to change the way I kind of do some things. Honestly, man, this sympathy thing is fucking yuck. The former UFC heavyweight, scared of some Redditors. Sean Strickland would never. I'm waiting for it. Yeah, I'm waiting for it. Yeah, but they, but you know what? Oh, if now he's waiting you, for you it. Can, now he's a badass. You can squeeze them. Exactly. That's why I'm I'm ready for it. Oh, okay. At Just, all times. I thought you, you were a nice guy. Now you want to beat up redditors. But smiling, it's way creepier. No, I don't want to do if that. Was, if he did that, he'd get sued to oblivion and he'd lose everything. Hope he doesn't do that. Please, Brendan, don't beat up a redditor. Don't beat up somebody that trolls you online and does it to you in your face because he would lose everything. That person would take so much pleasure in fucking, you know, filing a lawsuit against him and he'd lose everything. Like, please don't do that if you're Brendan. Please don't be that redacted. It's not that deep, really. As strong as you, I'd go, hi, thank you. And the last thing they see is your teeth. You'll go to a better place. I don't want to do that. What else we got? What's up, doc? With my truck, yeah. yeah, I can. So check it. I've been saving to. I have the video of me crashing. We had a GoPro on. It's so intense. Remember those words when the video comes out. It's so intense. I want, remember these words because I get you. I bet you it's not as intense as he's making it out to be. He's being very dramatic. But I remember these words. It's so intense. I want to see what when the video drops, what the actual crash looked like because I don't believe him for a second here. But my team will let me release till we get the payout from insurance, which I just got my today. Team. Yeah. My team. <laughs> Who? That CFO guy. Your CFO of YouTube. My team. I just got it today. They didn't cover. I'll tell you. We, we came I'll, here, I'll tell you, we came I'll tell here you. by Chopper. Yeah. Dude, so they covered no mods. I had nothing modded the fuck out. I don't know nothing about cars. I don't even drive. I'm looking to get my license soon. But even I know that insurance companies will never pay for your mod 
the mods that you do in your car after after the fact like why would they pay for that why would you think they would pay out on the mods as well like what does that make any sense insurance companies are notoriously very finicky and picky about what they pay out for anyway you have to prove a lot of things right in order to kind of get any sort of payout why would you think they would pay out on the mods that you did that weren't necessary you just did for your own you know for your own pleasure why would they cover that that makes no sense <laughs> what god almighty bro. car guy doesn't know anything about the car guy doesn't know anything about insurance does know nothing about fixing cars himself love it everyone's like insurance covers all that i'm like fuck yeah i sent no. them all this stuff they're like cool story we don't cover any of that fuck face <laughs> so that's cool but I, I found another TRX from this dude who built the exact same truck as me, but in blue, and he's right at... Didn't the guy ask him what happened with the truck, and he's describing buying another truck? Why is he rambling about this? The guy asked him, hey, what happened with your truck? Now he's talking about buying a new one. That is not really the question. You're not really answering my question, are you? This Is this ADHD brain, or is this just him waffling because he doesn't really want to tell the real story? like I think 40 minutes outside of here. So I got his truck with the payout, but all we're, I'm waiting to post that video as soon, it's a TRX, it's a, oh, what happened? Okay, so this is what. <laughs> okay, I knew I wasn't the only one thinking that. The guy's sitting there thinking, hold on, could you actually explain the story of what happened in the crash? Instead of talking about the new TRX you're about to buy in blue, we don't give a fuck. What happened with this car that you allegedly crashed? Wow, fucking hell. <laughs> happened, so. <laughs> This is what happened. So I fancy myself an off-roader, right? And um, I put King shocks on it. has 1,300 horsepower. It lifted. This thing was... Oh, my God, bro. The way this guy told stories. What happened? Okay, so I've got these shocks on it. It's lifted. What fucking happened? Horrible storyteller. Jesus Christ. Fucking dope. And huge balls. All, all my boys, like from King Shocks, uh, BJ Baldwin, who's a professional fucking truck driver. He all my boys, bro. Didn't you meet them last year? And you met them because you what? You have money to to fucking mod up your car. This whole boys, my friends, my pa like, are they really your boys? Because you took your car to their garage and paid them money to add some fucking shocks to your car and stuff. Are they like what? My boys. My boy, um, my Ryan, boy. Kibbe Tech, they're all, dude, we'll take you to Johnson Valley. All of us go. I'm like, fuck yeah. I have to shoot it on Friday, though, because I'm leaving town next week. They go, Friday doesn't work. Let's do it when you get This is the longest story about crashing a car I've ever heard in my life. We're still going, like, Kibbe Tech, shocks, blue car, lifted, horsepower. What happened to the truck? How did it flip? We got Wingus McDingus. Whitney would get pipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm more of a Kate Quigley one. If I, you know, if I wasn't involved, I'd tear down fucking Kate Quigley. I'm more of a Kate Quigley vibe. You know, she's a little bit dirty, a little bit of a druggy, right? I'm a Kate Quigley one. I'd tear Kate Quigley apart. <sighs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I go, fuck that, I'll go myself. So. I've never been off-roading, and I get up there, and <laughs> Casey was shooting it. He's laughing at this. It's an awful day. So we're going, doing all the cool stuff. Shoot's over. It's all good. I'm going through the sand, doing a fucking donuts, peeling out. Yay, right? Donuts. Everyone's like, go, Brendan. And then donuts. we're there for like four hours. We're done. One of my guys goes, dude, for the shot, we need you do one more fucking donut, and then drive through this. Dude, he said donut. He can't even pronounce donut. Donut. No way. I've got to go that back again. That was weird. Donut. What's a donut? At Kibby Tech, they're all, dude, we'll take you to Johnson Valley. Donut. All of us go. I'm like, fuck yeah, I have to shoot on. Have you ever heard him pronounce a donut, donut? Friday, though, because I'm leaving town next week. They go, Friday doesn't work. Let's do it when you get back. I go, fuck that. I'll go myself. So... <laughs> I've never been off-roading. Look, Brian, Brendan's legs are the same size as Bren, as Brian's. I'm going to have to get on Ozempic. I need to find out what the UK Ozempic is. Brendan's legs are the same size as Brian's. That is wild, bro. I need to get on Ozempic. I need to get on Ozempic 
ASAP. Fuck fucking doing, fuck working out, fuck being on a diet. I need to get on those Olympic. Look at his legs. Shit. And I get up there and <laughs> Casey was shooting it. He's laughing at this. It was an awful day. So we're going, doing all the cool stuff. Shoots over. It's all good. I'm going through the sand. <laughs> Azempic. Yeah, it's a super jello. Azempic. Doing a <laughs> fucking donuts. Donuts. You hear that? Donuts. Feeling out. Yay, right? Everyone's like, go, Brendan. And then we're there for like four hours. We're done. One of my guys goes, dude, for the shot, we need you one more fucking donut. And then. Donut. On my life, I don't think I've ever heard anybody pronounce donut, donut. In my life, I've never heard anyone pronounce donut, donut. That is incredible. Donut. How does this guy get paid to talk on stage? Life truly isn't fair, isn't it? How does this guy get paid to talk on stage? How does he have a podcast that makes money? How? Is it all Rogan? Rogan propped up this absolute redact who can't even speak correctly. Don't it? And we still don't know what happened, by the way. Why he flipped the car. We're still going. Drive through the sand. I'm like, dude, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing that. We just, we just need the one shot. I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. And, I, and then I don't know if you know trucks, but when you with the TRX, you can turn off traction control if you go Baja mode and hold down traction control for 10 seconds. But it, Ford actually shuts off. The traction control, I didn't know this, rams don't. So it picks up traction at a certain RPM. At 1300 horsepower, that traction picks up way faster. So I was going to, I was going to turn, I just stepped on the gas, and it just locked up and went fucking wooga, like flipped right over. And by the way. Here's the fun part. Here's the very fun part. Those side airbags <laughs> was like, cool story, Brendan, happy 2024. Boom, and knocked me out. Yeah, his head, he's went, Duh! You know how everyone's like, oh, how's your chin in UFC? Not good, but it's also, it's also not good when it comes to an airbag. Dude, I've, I've been knocked out by Roy Nelson. Uh, fucking, I've taken no punch Gara. from Virgo Crow Cop. No Gara knocked me fucking silly, silly. Travis Brown, right? No one's hit me harder than a 2022 <laughs> Ram TRX airbag. It hit me so fucking it, hard. It Is this a bit? Don't you find it interesting that he's got this really like camp cadence when he's talking? Like, what's this whole like gay thing that he does when he when he does comedy? He really camps it up. Is that like a persona he has on stage to make himself appear softer? Like he does this whole like really effeminate mannerisms and shit. So odd. You don't see it it's so and fast. It, and it, you'll, uh, you'll see the video. I, I go like this. Poof. Oh, I didn't see and it. And then this is actually the best bit he's had in a while. To be fair, he should put this in the special. This is actually, the, the, the story is terrible. The bit about him saying, hey, I've been knocked out all the time. People talk about my chin. The, no one's knocked me out harder than a fucking airbag in a 2020 Ram truck. That's actually a good joke. He should actually put that in the special. That's actually the best joke he's actually got. And funny, funny when you think about it, right? The best joke he's ever written is the, what, is the joke that comes from a real life experience, him living. That's probably one of the reasons why he doesn't write good jokes because he doesn't actually have a good life outside of comedy now that he's actually got a life and he's doing things he's driving trucks he's going to race he's meeting regular people quote unquote he has more funny things to share but when he was hanging around comedians flying all over the place selling out shows being a big dog he had nothing to talk about because you know it, but it's not f look look system system soundbar the bar for Brendan is super low, okay? Let's just, let's just give him some props. It was some way funny. I know it's not super funny. I know what you mean. The delivery is horrible. But at least it's, there's something there. That's better than fucking Mexican cookies, right? Like, he, <laughs> he's got a long way to go, but it's some way, like, there's, there's something there. It's better than bean cheese, bean cheese, right? It's better than pico de gallo, chili con. <laughs> it's better than that, okay? But here's what's dope. When you see the video, as the truck's going upside down, I go, not today. And I hit my seatbelt, and then I fucking fall right on the ground. And then I'm trying to get out, and the airbag... What? What does that have to do with anything? The car flipped, and he tried to take... 
I don't understand that. Can somebody explain that? What do you mean by that? The car flips and then you try to remove his seatbelt. Why would you try to take off the seatbelt? Or does he mean you try to put it on as it flipped? I don't get that. That's a weird part of the story. What? Hold on, let me rewind that bit. Sorry, I don't understand what he's talking about there. I just stepped on the gas and it just locked up and went fucking wooga, like flipped right over. And by the way, here's the fun part. Here's the very fun part. Those side airbags <laughs> was like, cool story, Brendan, happy 2024. Boom, and knocked me out. Yeah, his head. Sorry about repeating. He's went, Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You know how everyone's like, oh, how's your chin in UFC? Not good, but it's also, <laughs> it's also not good when it comes to an airbag. Dude, I've, I've been knocked out. Look at Brian looking at him like a proud papa. He's like, finally a good joke. Look at how excited Brian is. He's doing it. He's telling a joke. He's doing it. He's back. He's back. <laughs> Brian's really proud. The first good joke he's told in fucking years. All right, Roy Nelson. Uh, fucking, I've taken no punches from Virgo Crow Cop. No gear knocked me fucking silly. silly. Travis Brown, right? Siri. No one's hit me harder than a 2022 <laughs> Ram TRX airbag. It hit me so fucking it, it hard. Just, it literally, you don't see it, it's so and it, fast. And it, you'll, uh, you'll see the video, I, I go like this, Poof. oh. I didn't see and it. And then, but here's what's dope. When you see the video, as the truck's going upside down, I go, not today. And I hit my seatbelt and then I fucking fall right on the ground. I hit my seatbelt. What are you talking about? I hit my seatbelt. Oh, William Utsi. Did they get it? Was that a troll? Big up, Wingus McDingus. By the way, what is Rogan's funniest bit? So far, I'm laughing more here than I am at home. Wingus McDingus. Was it a troll? Wingus McDingus was uh, are you putting me on the spot <laughs> I don't know I can't name a bit that is funny am I being am I being a hypocrite am I being a not hypocrite am I um am I full of shit I can't name a single good Rogan joke and then I'm trying to get out and the airbags, they're so hard, I can't get out and I'm panicking. So then I just fucking yeah, open the door. Yeah, because I didn't know this, but you were afraid that the weight of the truck was going to tr was going to. I thought I was going to die. Yeah, I thought so, I was going to so die. So you see him kicking, trying to kick the window open. And I was... Yeah, I don't, exactly, Josie. I don't understand the seatbelt thing. I don't understand it. So the car flipped and he tried to put your seatbelt on. So he wasn't wearing it before to stop himself from rolling out, I think he means, right? Or did he mean he tried to take his seatbelt off? I don't know. I don't know. The truck. I hit my seat. As it was rolling, I hit my seatbelt. What does that mean? Does that mean you try to eject it or you try to like clip it in? It's going to come down on me, but yeah, it, it was weird. And it, you'll, you'll see the video. It's like, you know, it sends the SOS things all in. Ah, okay, system soundbar. He thought the weight of the truck would collapse the roof, so he wanted to release the seatbelt to get out. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You should explain it like that, then, isn't it? Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. And I'm crawling out. You just hear me go, Fuck! Yeah. yeah. And then what's cool... No, it's going, SOS. It's going, There's SOS. There's some woman going, you've had a crash. I'll notify the authorities. But, dude, when it says it's going to alert the authorities, I was like, there's no way they're... I'm in Johnson Valley, which is where Kings of Hammers at. I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere, like four hours from any city. Dude, a fucking chopper. Three cop cars. And then they're like, you all right? I'm like, I'm good. Like, cool. Like, can I get a ride back? They're like, absolutely not. So yeah, dude. I Press X to doubt on that one. Press X to doubt on that one. Anyway, guys, it's half six in the morning. I'm not going to sit here and watch this whole thing. Um, The last 20 minutes, we'll watch it later on. I can't do this anymore. It's fucking making my brain leak out from my ears. Um, We're going to watch the second part later on today, but I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to stop there. This is too fucking horrible. This is too fucking terrible. I'm sorry. I can't. <sighs> Fucking hell. Oh. <sighs>
Yeah, when I come back, Wingus McDingus, we'll do we'll do chin we'll do chin watch. So when I come back, we've got other things to talk about too. I've got some I've got a list of stuff on there, isn't it? I think I've got Burt Kreischer stuff, Shane Gillis, so we'll check all that stuff later. Um we'll do a, we'll do another half. Um but I can't do this, man. It's too terrible. It's too fucking awful. I'm sorry guys, I can't. I can't do this. Um but yeah, big up everybody for tuning in. Again, apologies that I started so late. Um I really do apologize for that. <laughs> Josie, that was awful. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this, bro. How much were the tickets to that show? Like $35? Vulcan, do you have to buy like a drink to sit down or something? What's the cover? What's the, do you have to, is it like a cover price or something? Gas company menu. Let's see if someone's got a menu for, for Vulcan or something. Because fucking hell, bro. Dark Web J, I was nodding out. <laughs> do they have a menu? No, they don't have a, they don't have a menu, do they? I, don't, I can't see a menu here on their fucking screen. Let's just do... Actually, let's do Vulcan Gas Company. Let's do someone who's got a picture of it so I can see what it looks like. Okay, there it is. Google Reviews. I want to see somebody's got an actual video of it because that was fucking horrendous, man. Big up to everybody, everybody tuned in. I appreciate all of you. Um, please make sure you're liking the stream before you guys leave. That'd be much appreciated. Like the stream for me. Give me a little thumbs up there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how people do this, man. I really don't know how people do this. Credit to the fans. Credit to the fans that actually go. I don't know how they do this, how they put up with it, but that was fucking garbage. Um... American streets are funny, isn't it? Don't American streets kind of look like a backdrop in a movie? This looks fake. This looks like it's all made out of like cardboard or something, right? American building structures are interesting how they look like. It kind of looks like it's been propped up by fucking wood, you know, stilts at the back or something. It looks like a set, doesn't it? It doesn't look real. That's the, I guess that's when people come out of the club all fucking drunk and shit. The black man on stage. Nice. That's where we belong tap dancing for the whites out there somebody djing i think there as well is that a dj yeah there's a dj playing there oh maybe i'll go play at the vulcan one day i'll do a little dj set <laughs> a band playing here somewhere it looks kind of fun they've got a little backdrop that you can do take pictures at okay it's not all, okay that's how it's not all american city oh can you imagine the amount of jizz on these fucking sofas can you imagine the amount of human fucking liquids on these sofas can you imagine the amount of fucking jizz on these sofas can you imagine the amount of jizz on these sofas fucking hell uh we've got a couple of lads here standing around more people at the vulcan it looks like a fun spot to be fair i'd definitely go if i was there not to see tfat k live though 